Okay, hey, thank you so much for watching, listening. We're finishing our series on water walking, walking on water. And in this series, I really have enjoyed doing this and, and hopefully it's been meaningful and connecting you, encouraging to you. Um, when we go through dark seasons, when we go through difficult times, opposition, struggles, um, when we consider, you know, like what Jesus has done in the past, all the miracles he's done, all the things he's done. And then when we're in the midst of like uncertainty and things that are scary, s circumstances, situations, and watching what Jesus does. And so I just encourage you as, you, as you listen today, you know, we've talked about the beginning of the whole experience when Jesus had multiplied bread and fish, fed more than 5,000 people. We talked last week about, and that was for the crowd, we talked about the disciples getting into the boat um, and who those disciples were. So you had a crowd, you had a community, those 12 disciples. But today I wanna to talk about a connector. So community, sorry, crowd, community, and then connector. And what you see here is this progression from big to middle to very close and intimate. And I would say that Peter is this connector. Because in the midst of all these disciples, these 12 disciples, Peter is the one that says to Jesus, as Jesus is walking on the water in the storm around 3 a.m. at night on the Sea of Galilee, Peter says, Lord, if it's you, bid me come. And I love that about Peter. He's like, you know, no matter what, I know Jesus well enough to know if it's really genuine Jesus, he always wants me to come no matter what's happening around me. And number two, I don't care about the, the hardship and the impossibility. If I, if I see it's Jesus, Jesus can make anything possible. Nothing is impossible with Jesus. And I just encourage you, we may know that, you know, nothing is impossible with God. We may know that in our better moments, but in those dark times, in those times when there's storms and opposition, adversity, hardship, when we're freaked out, we're afraid and uh, panicky, let's keep in mind that nothing, nothing is impossible with God, not even walking on the water. And so Peter says, Jesus, if it's you, bid me come. And Jesus says, come on. Hey, Peter, let's take a stroll. <laughs> Let's take a stroll at three or four in the morning on the water in a storm. Boy, I mean, like, that's a tilt. And, and I think it's interesting that there are 11 disciples in the boat. And I don't know. I mean, if I was in the boat and one of those 11, I would have been like, hey, dude, don't do that. It's dangerous. You can't walk on the, who do, you know, all these. And, but Peter gets out of the boat. He gets out of the boat, regardless of what the other disciples are saying or not saying, their reactions. He just has his eyes straight on, 100% crosshairs on Jesus. And he's like, you know what? I want to come to you no matter what. End of story, full stop. I want you, Jesus. And I think that is so, such a powerful truth for us to let permeate, saturate, absorb into the depths of our soul that we want Jesus, full stop. No matter what season you're at in your life, no matter what experience you're going through, no matter how old you are, or how young you are, no matter how much training you've had in Christianity, Bible, what, no matter any of that stuff, just flat out, I want Jesus. The end. Enough said. We can stop right there and say, I just want Jesus. And I think that in and of itself is a powerful, powerful, riveting, focusing, dialing it into, here's the crosshairs of what we're doing. We're following Jesus. So Peter gets out of the boat and he begins to walk on the water to Jesus. He's the only human that we know of in, throughout history that has walked on water. Granted, Jesus was there and he's inviting him. Hey, dude, let's take a stroll. He walks on the water. At the same time, I love this about Peter because he's, he is very much like you and me. We, we can see Jesus. We might have him dialed into our crosshairs. We might have him scoped in 100% with our focus. But sometimes, like Peter, we might get distracted with the wind, the waves, the storm, the darkness, everything that's going on around us. We might possibly lose our focus. <laughs> have you ever done that? You're all dialed in, scoped. Yep, <clears throat> I want Jesus, full stop. But then you start hearing news from 
You get some, some kind of information from your kids. You get some kind of report from school, a bad test grade. You get some kind of breakup with, I talked about that, with a, a, a boyfriend or girlfriend. You have adversity, hardship. And you begin to feel and see and experience all that hardship. And you lose your focus on Jesus. And that's what happens with Peter. He starts to look at the wind, feel the waves, and what am I do? What? This is, cr this is insane. I shouldn't be out here doing this. This is nuts. And right when he starts to lose his focus, it says he begins to sink. And I like this. I like he, he calls out to Jesus, Lord, save me. And it says in verse 30, sorry, uh, verse, I think it's 31. He says, Jesus immediately reaches out his hand and grabs Peter. And he says to Peter, why did you doubt? Don't, don't doubt. Have faith. Keep your focus on me. Keep your faith and your confidence secure in me. And even though you've had a, a drowning <laughs> opportunity, you've kind of lost the plot, Jesus grabs your hand and says, it's okay. I can rescue you. I can pull you up. I'm your life jacket. I'm your life preserver. I'm going to help you. We'll get in the boat and we'll make it to the other side. So if, when not even if, when you lose your focus on Jesus, it's okay. Not the end of the world. Get back. Hey, help. I'm drowning. And Jesus says, I got you. Thank you for coming back on focus, back on target. If you've lost your focus, then maybe it's just time to say to Jesus, help, I'm drowning. And, and recalibrate. Help me with my focus. Help me with my unbelief. Help me. I'm overwhelmed. Help me. I can't do this. I can't. <gasps> And Jesus reaches out and says, I got you. I've got your hand. I've got your back. I'm here present. I'm your life jacket. And you may not see how or way and when, how, whatever, but I'm here and I'm going to help you. And even if he has to give you like mouth to mouth resuscitation <laughs> to breathe life back into you, Jesus can do that. And so in this whole experience of water walking, you know, we see the crowd, we see the community, we see Peter as, as a connector to be with Jesus. I'd encourage you, let's, let's, let, if you're the connector, that means you're part of the community and that means you get to experience as well the, 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 the crowd as the miracles and all this stuff. But let's, let's make it our goal to actually be like Peter, walking on the water, being close to Jesus and keeping him as our top focal priority. And you know, when we think about this as well, we go through hardships and adversities. Jesus is with us walking on the water. Let's be careful we don't let our emotions cloud and obscure who Jesus really is. And when we struggle, when we drown, when we fall, when we slip, let's just say, Jesus, help me. Help. Help. You know, that's the nickname for Holy Spirit is help. And Holy Spirit always points us to Jesus. So help is a good thing. It's not an anathema. It's not a four-letter word that <laughs> you shouldn't use. It's the best four-letter word you can use, help. So thank you. Thank you so much for subscribing. Make sure you hit the notification bell right there. And here's a question for you to think about. What experience, and, and you can answer this, what experience um, has distracted you from following Jesus? You're like, hmm. You can leave that in the feedback in the comments. What experience has distracted you from following Jesus? Again, make sure you hit the notification bell. And da, 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 this is your fantastic joke. I know we love these. I know you, a lot of you just like turn it off right here because you're like, these are so stupid. I understand that. But for those of you who like the jokes, here's a great one. Someone tried to sell me a coffin yesterday. I said, that's the last thing I need. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Next week is going to be lots better. Thanks again for watching and listening.